land of promise over in the great beyond where the sailors shall sing the glory share where the souls of men shall enter and live on forevermore and everybody will be happy over there and i said everybody will be happy will be happy over there we will shout sing god's praises everybody will be happy over there and mothers fathers sisters brothers will be singing around the throne in the land where no one ever knows a care and the christians of all ages will join in the triumph song everybody will be happy over there i said everybody will be happy will be happy over there we will shout and sing god's praises everybody will be happy over there hear nobody praying at no morning in that land for the burdens there will be for us to bear and all the people will be singing glory glory to the lamb and everybody will be happy over there i said everybody will be happy will be happy over there we will shout and sing God's praises there, but it will be happy over there. saved us and who kept us by his grace and who brought us to this land so bright and fair we will praise his name forever as we look upon his face so everybody will be happy over there and i said everybody will be happy will be happy over there we will shout and sing God praises everybody will be happy over there and i said everybody will be happy will be happy over there we will shout and sing god's praises everybody will be happy over there Christ of Calvary. This would be my prayer to Lord each day to help me do the best I can. For I need thy life. Guide me day and night. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Well, blessed Jesus, 
Hold my hand, I, yes, I need thee every hour. Through this land, pilgrim land, protect me by ever loving and saving power. Hear my plea, feeble plea, oh Lord, dear Lord, look down on me. Travel in your light divine That I may see the blessed way And keep me that I may be holy thine And sing redemption song someday I will be a soldier brave and true And ever firmly take a stand Oh, as I homeward go and I daily meet the folk, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Well, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Yes, I need every hour through this land, pilgrim land, protect by loving and saving power hear my plea feeble plea oh Lord dear Lord down on me when I kneel in prayer blessed Jesus hold my hand when I wander through the valley dim toward the setting of your sun Oh, lead me safely to the land of rest Till by a crown a life have won I have put my faith in thee, dear Lord That I may reach the golden strand And there's no other friend Whom I can depend Blessed Jesus, hold my hand well, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Yes, I need every eye through this land. Pilgrim land protect by ever loving and saving power. Hear my plea, feeble plea, oh Lord, dear Lord, down on me. saying before church, Sister Shirley actually texted me and uh, asked for prayer tonight, said that she didn't go into what, just said she was facing something real real bad tomorrow and wanted prayer for her and Megan. And um, Brother George Pike went to the doctor hospital today and they run some cultures and x-rays and stuff and won't know anything really till Thursday. So we want to Keep them in prayer. Keep the church in prayer. Uh, Holcomb, Dana Holcomb, um, uh, Brother Richard would remember, but Sister Dot. Sister did you Did you know them? Well, I, I saw it. I didn't, I don't you just saw it. Yeah, your daddy would, because it's Sister Dot's granddaughter, and he'd he'd remember. Everybody remember Sister Dot, uh, but got killed in a car wreck today. So we want to remember the Holcomb family. two others today so I'm sure she wants to be remembered because I'm pretty sure she contemplated 
bad things to do for them. I already got wind that it wasn't too good. <laughs> so, Bob said, Lest, he said, I got to talk to you when you get home about Christian. figured that you must have had a handful today. But you said it was all right. Uh, you might have to be worried about your cousin. She might be contemplating evil things for you. Uh, but do remember them. Uh, I see Sister Denise is not here, so remember her tonight. And them grandbabies. I don't know if Brother Richard was supposed to give her a break and he got gone before the grandbabies got in the car, so he'd have a break. I don't know which happened, but uh, remember them. How did your dad get, Brother Stan? We hadn't heard back yet. Hadn't heard back yet. Uh, Daddy was asking me today if everything was all right with your dad, so he remembered you going down there. Have I remembered everything? Yeah, remember Susie, she had a little operation done today or yesterday or sometime or another, remember her this morning. All right. All right, Brother Michael, lead us in prayer. One mind, Lord. The speaker speaks, Lord, and let us learn something, Lord. Let us grow in the grace and knowledge of you, Lord. Fill this place with your presence, Lord, and let us learn things and the, the deep things of God, Lord. Let them be revealed to us, Lord. And like I said, put us in one mind and one accord that we may receive what is to be spoken today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. King of 
refuge for my soul, Lord, for my soul. Needing a friend just to save me in the end. Oh, where could I go but to the Lord? Life here is grand. Friends, I love so dear. Comfort I get from God's own word. Yet when I face the chilling hand of death, where could I go but to? Could I go? Where could I go? See, King of Refuge, for my soul, Lord, for my soul, I'm needing a friend just to save me in the end. Where could I? go but to the Lord. I always know good and well that I was forgetting something. I talked to Brother Don O'Hearn before church. He feels like he's having gallbladder trouble now. So he was needing prayer tonight. Uh, talked to Bill Green before church tonight and the doctors told him six more weeks. So, and he was having a real terrible headache. Thinks it's that pinched nerve in his in his neck that's giving him trouble tonight. So, Brother Michael's meeting Saturday, 11 o'clock. I'd like to stay here longer with the man's allotted days and watch those fleeting changes of life's uneven ways. But if my Savior calls me that sweet home on high, I live with him forever in glory by and by. Oh yes, I live in glory, glory by and by. I tell and sing love story there on high with my dear Redeemer. There no more to die. Oh yes, I live in glory, glory by and by. And I want to be a service along this pilgrim way. And lead the lost to Jesus as fervently I pray. As day by day I travel, I keep him every night. And live with him forever in glory by and by. Oh yes, I live in glory, glory by and by. I tell and sing a little story there on high. There with my dear Redeemer, there no more, more to die. Oh, yes, I live in glory, glory, by and by. The end I know is near, and by faith I look away to yonder home, supernal, the land of an endless day. I cling to him forever and look beyond the sky and spend these endless ages in glory, by and by. Oh, yes, I'm living in glory, glory, by and by. I'm telling and sing a love story there on high. I'm here with my Redeemer, no more to die. Oh, yes, I'm living in glory, glory, by and by. Oh, yes, I'm living in glory, glory, by and by. I'm telling and singing God's praises on high. My dear Redeemer, I'm no more, more to die. 
Yes, I'm living in glory, glory by and by. Amen. You want to say something? No? All right. Well, I said, I'm just good to be in church. Uh huh. should I go? To the Lord? Let's see here. Let me think here. I think I'll just talk real shortly. It's not going to take very long. Let's see here. That's not where we want to go. Trying out the young folks. Is that what we're doing? We should get Christian up here then. All right. Well, I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're gathered here in your presence, Lord, in your name, God. The Bible says where two or three are gathered, you will be in the midst, Lord. And we know that you're in the midst here, Lord God. And let, like I said before, let us be in one mind and one accord, Lord, that what I say is not from me, Lord, it's from you, and that it be accepted into the hearts of the people, Lord, and remember those that we mentioned before, Lord, everybody with their troubles, Lord, for we know that having faith is not thinking that you're going to move, but knowing that you will move, Lord God, and that you will do all the promises, Lord, that you've promised us, Lord, and you will move, Lord, because you told us so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, Sunday, it was Sunday morning when Brother Jonathan talked about remembering where we fell from. Well, let's remember where we're going back to. Amen. That's what I want to think of. I don't want to think about, you know, where we fell from. You know, it's good to remember that, but we got to remember where we're going back to. Isn't that right? You know, we, uh, we fell from a good place, but I tell you, we're going back. We're going to get back there. He said, you know, we're going to come to a time there's going to be no pain in childbirth. There's not going to be any sickness, any disease. We're going to be like Brother Greg, and we ain't getting any older. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. Oh, man. And uh, I, wanted, I was reading in Genesis after he uh, spoke about that, and I'm going to read a little here, just real short. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat, and live forever. But we're going to take from that tree of life. Isn't that right? That's Jesus Christ. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword. I like that right there. A flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. I always liked that scripture. I always liked reading about the flaming sword. But I want to talk to you about what that flaming sword really is. You see, it talks about, it turns every which way to keep the way yeah, right. to the tree of life. It's, it's garden, the garden of Eden. It's gardening. And, you know, what does a guard do? He keeps people out, don't he? Yeah. But he does something else, too. He lets people back in right. that are supposed to be there. You go, you go to uh, wherever it is you go, they got somebody standing out there. And, you know, they're, they're keeping you from going in. But if you're meant to go back in there, if your name is on that list, if your name's written on the Lamb's book of life, you're going to get back in there. Amen. 
He's going to let you walk right in. And let me tell you what that flaming sword is. That ain't no flaming sword. That's the word of God. We know that the type, we know that the sword is a type of the word of God. What the Bible talks about the angel and the sword came out of his mouth. It ain't talking about no sword. It's talking about the word in that right, brother and sister. Now, we know that that flaming sword, that's the word of God. And we know that it's guarding the way. It's taking, it's not letting anybody in, but it's let, letting them in. It's keeping people out, but it's also keep, keeping people in and bringing people in. And we're trying to get back. So what we need to do is we need to get a hold of that flaming sword. We need to get a hold of that word of God. We need to bury ourselves in this word. We need to bury it in our hearts. We need to get a hold of that flaming sword and it's gonna lead us right back to where we're trying to get to. We're trying to get back to Eden. We fell from it, but I tell you, when we fall, we're gonna enjoy it that much better when we get back to it since we fell from it. Isn't that right? You always enjoy something more after you lost it. When you get it back, what is it saying? You don't know what you got until you lose it. Well, we already lost it, but we're going back. And we're going to enjoy it that much more. Now, we're going to get a hold of that flaming sword. We're going to bury ourselves in this word. Because what is Jesus? Jesus is the word. The word. The word of God. And he's the word made flesh. We need to get a hold of this. Because this right here, everybody says life doesn't come with an instruction manual, but they're wrong. It's right here. This is life's instruction manual. This is the instruction manual. This is the map. This is the map to get back to where we're trying to go to. This tells us right here, well, he's on that list. I'm going to let him through. He's going back to Eden. He's going back to where he came from. Like Brother Jonathan said, we got to remember where we came from, and we got to remember because we got to remember how to get back. Because if you don't remember where you came from, you can't remember how to get back. Lord knows my mom tried dropping me off some places, but I knew where I came from, so I knew how to get back. She couldn't get rid of me that easy. She tried. Lord, have mercy on her. Mm, 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 mm. But I really, uh, I really enjoyed reading that scripture. Uh, I really enjoy knowing that all the answers are right here to all problems, every problem we've ever faced. It's right here, you know. And you know, we just gotta, we just gotta get a hold of what it, of what it really is, of what we truly have here. This really is the answer to every problem you've ever faced, brother and sister. We can, we can really get back to where we're trying to go to. And me and Adam, you know, that's not really. I was thinking that's not what was on my mind until I stood up here. I should have got up here and wore everybody out about that public education system that I skipped out on to get here. Because, you know, I said, well, I'm going to go support my brethren. Amen. I can learn later. I got the book. I'll read it. I'll read it later. I'm going to go read a real book. This book, that may have the answers to the test but or the final. You want to think about that. My grandfather said, you know, he was in college and they were all laying around studying for their final, you know, their final test. We're studying for the final, the one and the only, the very last final. This is our textbook. This is going to show us the answers to that last final. And every question that's on there, that answer's in here, brother and sister. We just got to get a hold of it. That's the only way we're going to last in the way the world is now. You got to get a hold of the word because if you don't, you're not going to get anywhere. You know, this is, this is the answer. Everybody, the world's falling into such bad shape. Everybody's like, Lord, Lord what are we going to do and he said I told you my word my commandments follow it read it learn it bury it in your heart if it's in your heart it's not going anywhere right. you know you can't uh, there's going to come a day when we're not going to be able to read the Bible we're not going to be able to read the word of God but if we got it buried in our hearts that don't matter they may take the book away but it's still in our heart we're written epistles read of every man you know and if we wanted to we could write us a gospel yeah. Gospel according to Michael. How many of y'all would read that one? Yeah. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't read it. But, uh, but you know, that's uh, I'm meddling now like we talk about Brother Jonathan. Uh, but, you know, you that's what it is. You know, it is what it is, Brother Jonathan says, and this is it. This is what it is, and this is the final. You know, we got to study for that final because if you don't study, you, you're in trouble, Jack. When you get to that test, if you're sitting there looking at a test and you said, well, I didn't study, too bad. Should have been studying. Yeah, amen. You know, and uh, yeah. you know, if you really want to get into it, we need to walk with God. Yeah. Don't need to just read Him and you know talk to Him every once in a while. Yeah. I pray to God, you know, every Sunday when I'm at church, when I get home, you know, we need to be praying. What does the Bible say? Pray 
unceasingly. That's what it says. And we need to be doing that. We need to be living that. We need to be walking with God. We need to have one testimony in that we please God. Because yeah. Enoch walked with God and was not for God took him. And he had that testimony that he pleased God. We need to have that testimony. I want to have that testimony. I want to walk with God and just walk right on out of here. Y'all ain't going to see me no more. That's what I'm planning for. And we ain't going to be, you know, getting caught up in the roof or whatever. I sent Adam a picture and it said, get a rapture hatch. That way you don't hit the roof when you're going out of here. We ain't going to be doing all that. We're going to be, we're going to be gone. We need, to, we need to be walking with God. Enoch wasn't a special case. You know, he wasn't just, you know, well, that was Enoch, you know. We can't do that, you know. Elijah and the flaming chariots, eh. That was just one. He ain't no special case. We can do that. If we really get a hold of that, we could be in it. We could please God. We could have the testimony that we please God, and we need to. That's what we really need to strive for. You know, we don't need to be striving for worldly gain. Everybody talks about worldly gain. You saw where that got Lot. That got him with his family gone. You know, he raised his children in Sodom, his daughters. We don't need to pitch our tent toward Sodom. We need to pitch our tent toward the word of God. Because when you pitch your tent toward Sodom for worldly gain, because the Bible says, what, that Lot sat in the gate. Yeah. It wasn't saying that there was a big gate and he sat on top of it. That means he was somebody important. Right. That means he was somebody important in that city. You couldn't walk through that city without saying Lot's name without somebody knowing who he was. Right. And he knew better than to go there. Sure because did. when the angels came... And they said, well, we'll stay out in the street. He pressed sorely upon them to come inside. Right. You know why he did? Because he knew. He knew he was living with a bunch of devils, but he stayed there anyway because they were making him rich. Yeah. That's why he stayed there. He stayed there. I believe that he had a big mansion and all, everything he could have wanted there inside him. I'm sure he had the ear to the king. But when the people, when the angels showed up, he said, no, you need to come inside. Because he knew he was living with those people, but they were making him rich, so he didn't care, you know. He didn't care. And when you raise your children in Sodom, you know, there's going to be problems. And what happened, you saw what happened. He raised his daughters in Sodom, and they adopted the morals of Sodom. And that's why they did what they did. We all know that. There's no point in going into details of what happened there. But that's because he raised them there. You know, everybody's like, well, I don't understand where I went wrong. We went to the first charismatic church of Sodom every Sunday. I don't understand why my children are devils. Come on. Y'all need to get right. You need to get right with God. They only watch teen mom every once in a while. I don't understand why my daughter's pregnant. You know, well, that's, that's that Babylonian garment we was talking about. You need to get Jericho out of your house because that's what that is. All these worldly things, that's Jericho. We need to shout and knock those walls down. We marched around there seven times. We came through seven church ages, and at the end, what we do? We shouted, and the walls fell down. We shouted the walls down. We already shouted them walls down. We just need to get Jericho out of our house because a lot of people still got Jericho in their house. My Aunt Esther, she called me the other day. She said, Michael, I bought this video game for Dustin. Y'all have seen my Aunt Esther. That's my Uncle David's uh, wife. And she said, and I didn't know it was this bad. We got to get this thing out of here. And that's the way people need to be. When you see something that you know compromises what you believe and what's right, you need to get it out. Get it out. Anything can be Jericho. Anything can be Jericho. No matter what it is you let in your house, it can be Jericho. It don't matter. It can be a movie, television. Oh, Lord, don't preach on television. Clothes. Them, them, uh, those short skirts that girls wear. Them, them skinny jeans Brother Jonathan was talking about. That's Jericho right there. You got to get rid of that. You know, and uh, if you don't, your children are going to suffer. Because Jer well, who's aching. He took the Babylonian garments and the, and the, what is it, silver, I think it was, and he kept it and hid it in his house. And you saw what happened to him. And his whole family, ooh, man, his sheep, everything he owned, they piled it up on that hill and they said, well, set them ablaze. And if you ain't careful, if you still got Jericho in your house, somebody might be feeling the blaze if they ain't careful. And you don't want to be feeling no blaze unless it's the all-consuming fire of God. You don't want to be feeling that. But, you know, Oh, man, I bet his wife was nagging him the whole way there. I told you not to keep that, you devil. You know, she was mad. Well, then it ended abruptly. But, you know, that's, you know, that's the way we got to be. As soon as we see something that we know ain't right, Come on. Yeah. get rid of that. You know, a lot of things can be Jericho. Anything can be Jericho. You're, you're, all right, say you got children. Their little boyfriend or girlfriend, that can be Jericho if you ain't careful. 
You don't need to be compromising anything. You need to get rid of them. They ain't a Christian. Get out of here, Jack. You know, it's, it's, it ain't right. You don't need to be compromising what you believe and compromising the word of God for others or for things that you think make you happy when it really don't make you happy. This is what makes you happy. Amen. Knowing that you're going to be walking back into Eden is what's going to make you happy. You don't need to be, you know, worldly gain. That don't matter. You know, everybody wants their children to be somebody. You know, they want them to be somebody. Well, my child's a doctor. My child's a lawyer. My child's this and this and that. Ain't none of that going to matter when the last day comes and we're going to be going to be with the Lord because it don't matter whether you was a doctor or whether you was a preacher or whether you was begging on the side of the streets. If you lived by this, if you had this and you had that testimony that you please God, it don't matter who you are on the earth. Everybody's so big on that. Well, I want my kid to be somebody. You don't need to be caring about if your kid's somebody. You need to be caring about if they're going to heaven. Amen. That's what you need to worry about. They put them in these schools, public schools, man. Oh, Lord have mercy. I, and, you know, that's, that's the breeding ground of the devil if I've ever seen it. I was there. You know, everybody is always like, well, you, it ain't that bad. You can't tell me it wasn't that bad. I was there, Adam. Yeah, you know how it is. It ain't right. I've seen some of the most terrible things I've ever seen there. And my mom got me out of there after a while. She said, look, this ain't right. We need to get him out of here. And they, they put him in school because they want him to get a good education, because they want him to get a good job, because they want him to be somebody. None of that's going to matter. None of that's going to matter. You need to be worried about if they're studying for the final. It don't matter about them finals in school. You need to be studying for the one and only final, the one that's going to make the biggest difference in your life and whether it's everlasting or not. Because we have everlasting life. Yeah. We're going to be living in Eden, brother and sister. We're going to be having a good time there. Brother Bob's going to be jumping and shouting and having yeah. a good time. I tell you, man, this man, 81, is that what you said he was? The 21, or the 21st of April? Oh, the 8th of April. Oh, 28th of April. Oh, man, he's over here jumping and shouting, making me and Adam look bad. Right. We need to get, we need to... We need to do something about that. When he jumps up, we need to jump up and run with him. He's going to outrun all of us. He's going to hit the door and be gone. He's going to run on, on with Jesus. I'm going on. When the streets turn to gold, I don't know I'm home. Isn't that right? That's where we're going. We're going home. We're going back. We need to get, we need to get excited like that. We need, I'm, I'm one of the worst ones. I'll sit back there. Hey, man, you know, just. We need to be like Brother Bob. Jump up. Woo! Get excited. That's what we need to do. What'd you say? That's what, you know, that's the way we need to be. We don't want to be sitting around. You know, the Bible says to be excited about the things of God. You need to be excited. You know, just... Jesus died for us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We need to be like Brother Bob. Woo! Jesus died for my sins. I got everlasting life. Why, why is nobody excited about that? People need to get excited about that. We need to be excited about the word of God. We need to be excited about what Jesus has done for us and what he's going to continue to do for us. Everybody's just, eh, like it's no big deal. We, what's wrong with people? We need to get these people born again is what it is. They need to get excited. We need to have a fire set inside of us an all-consuming fire an ever-burning fire that no man can put out the world can't take it away and no man's going to be able to put it out we need to be always excited constantly Amen. excited pray without ceasing constantly praying for one another lifting up our brother that's another thing that everybody's got problems with we need to be lifting up our brother we need to be we need to be supporting each other supporting our brothers we need to support the church Pay your tithes. That's what we all need to be doing. You know, we can't just sit around and, well, it was a good service. I'll pay tithes next month. Eh. It was a good service, Jesus and all that. Yeah. Woo! Let's get excited for God. Let's do things for God. And, you know, another thing, we got to get into one mind and one accord. Like the Bible says, if nobody does that, we just, it ain't going to go nowhere. You can't do nothing if you're not in one mind and one accord. We need to have everybody sitting down and everybody on the same page, everybody on one mind and one accord, and then God's really going to start moving. Amen. Once we're all ready and we're all together and we're all saying, come on, Lord, let's do something. Let's yeah. make a move for God. Let's do something. That's when the Lord's really going to move. Yeah. He's going to say, look at my, this is 
is my son in whom I'm well pleased. These are my sons in whom I'm well pleased. And they're all together sitting at the table and they're all ready and happy. They want me to move. You gotta want him to do something. Everybody thinks they're sitting around waiting on God. God's waiting on you. Everybody says when they shouted at Jericho, they shouted. He was waiting on them to shout for the walls to fall down. He's waiting on us to shout now. We're in the last church age. We got to get ready. It's coming. We done marched around Jericho seven times with the seven trumpet. We need to shout. Everybody's sitting around waiting on God. Well, God will do this. He's going to make me feel better. You know, I'm going to, I'll stop smoking when God wants me to. And you know this. Uh, nah, God's waiting on you. He's waiting on you to get off the couch and do something. He's waiting on you to get up and get ready and start moving for him. Because if you got somebody working for you, you want them to be ready, constantly ready. You know, what do you need me to do? What do you need me to do? Let's, let's do something. And that's when you really want it. That's when that gets you excited. I believe we get God excited. I believe when God sees his sons and daughters all moving and excited and ready, that he gets excited too. He's, you know, like if you got your parents, I don't have any brothers or sisters, so it's just me, but Lord knows my parents couldn't have survived if there were more than one of me. So, you know, if I was to get excited, you know, Dad, Dad, look at this, Mom, look at this, they're going to get excited too. That's the way God is. If he sees his children getting excited, of course he's going to be excited. If they're all together, two or three are gathered in the midst and they're excited, he's going to be there. You can guarantee he's going to be there. His sheep know his voice. And a stranger, they're not going to follow. They're not going to follow, and he knows that. And he knows that they need to be doing something for him. They need to be excited. We need to get somewhere. We need to start moving. We need to start getting something going. Amen. We need to start reaching out to all these people because there are people out there that need to be reached. Yeah. And we are all sitting around waiting for God. God will bring them in. God will reach them. No, he's waiting on you. That's right. Go out and get them. Amen. Everybody says, well, we don't want certain people here. You know, we got to make sure, you know, we don't want no, none of them crazy folks, you know. No, we need them. They, and they need us they need us and we need them he will add unto his church daily them that are to be saved it don't say them that are to be saved it ain't that bad you know well the liar we'll get him and the drunk we'll take care of him but you know that one lady who you know I saw her on the street corner we don't want her in here yeah we do we need to get her in here and get her saved God don't, you know, he's not the kind of person that's going to sit back and, you know, well, their sin is worse than their sin, so, you know, we'll go for them. He's going to want everybody. Right. The Bible says, what does it say? That, that all, he wished that all were saved except the son of perdition. That way the scriptures can be fulfilled. He didn't even want Satan going to hell. He would have said, if it could have fulfilled the scriptures the other way, he would have said, let's save him. Let's get him born again. The only reason he had to be going to hell was to fulfill the scriptures. And the dragon and, the, and hell is going to be cast into the lake of fire and we don't want to have no part in that. We want to be up there running and shouting with Brother Bob. There ain't gonna, you know, it's, we, gotta get, we really got to get into that. We really got into working into getting one mind and one accord. Adam always says, you know, imagine what we could do if everybody was in one mind and one accord. Not, you know, the little things that separate people. You know, and just little crazy things that separate people in there. Well, I'm breaking fellowship with him because he don't believe that Jesus never laughed like I do. Yeah. What? What is wrong with you people? You can be able to sit down and discuss things that you don't agree with with your brother and he still be your brother. Right. But me and Adam were talking the other day about the fourth man in the fire. And we thought differently about it, but that don't make him any less my brother. Lord knows I'm right, but Lord help him. That don't, you know, that don't make a difference. You know, he's still my brother. It don't matter. This is the way I think of it. Say you're, you're married and you're having an argument with your wife and y'all disagree or your husband, vice versa, whoever, you know. You don't divorce them just because you got one small little agreement. You don't divorce them. Well, she don't think the same way I do about one particular thing. Got to get rid of her and get a new one. That ain't the way we need to be working. We need to say, all right, well, he thinks a little differently about me. I'm going to pray about it. Maybe he'll pray about it. Maybe one of us will come up with the right answer one day. Because Lord knows they're probably both wrong. 
If they think they're wrong, they need to come to me and I'll tell them what's right. Because they're probably both wrong. They need to think about that, you know. Because everybody thinks they got all the answers. I'm with Brother Greg. I said, I don't have have 100%, but I got 99. That's right. I learned that from you. But, you know, everybody thinks they got all the answers. Well, they're wrong. They need to pray about it. And maybe the Lord will lead them to the truth. You need to be praying about it, too. Because you may be wrong. You might be wrong, or you need to be praying that they come to the truth. That's really where you need to be at. You need to say, well, I know I'm right by faith. I know I'm right from hearing of the word of God, but I need to be praying that they're going to think, they're going to come to the light of what's true. Well, you know, and everybody, they're married to their doctrine over their deity. And that's another problem. That's something they really need to, you know, you need to watch out for that because anything can be an idol. It don't matter what it is. It can be the doctrine that your pastor has taught you over the last 60 years. It don't matter. If what they're saying, if you're taking that over God, you're in trouble. You know, if you ask somebody, well, what saves you? And they say Acts 2.38, and they don't say the love and grace and mercy of Jesus Christ, there's a problem. Well, you know, be baptized and repent in Jesus. That don't matter. You know, it's, it's, what, it's what is here in your heart. That makes a difference, sure. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm saying you don't need to be worshiping that over your doctrine. Well, I believe the evidence of the Holy Ghost is this. I believe it's this. I believe it's this. So what? Let's all get together and still be brothers. It don't matter what you think. Yeah, it don't matter if you if you think it's speaking in tongues or if you think it's running the aisles or if you think it's whatever, you know. It don't matter. All we need to worry about is getting it. I don't care what... He didn't, he didn't show the evidence, you know, he, he ain't got it. Well, who cares? You need to get it to him. Help him get it. It don't matter what the evidence is. We don't need to be worrying about the evidence or, you know, what, what the fruits of it are. We just need to be worried about everybody getting the Holy Ghost. That's what we need to worry about. It don't matter what the evidence is. It does, but it don't matter as much as everybody thinks it does. It does, but, you know, that we don't want to get into idol worship. That's crazy. That is crazy. You don't want to be married to your doctrine. You want to be married to your deity. I'm the bride of Christ. I'm not the bride of doctrine. We need to, everybody needs to get a hold of that. A lot of people have problems with that. You know, and everybody says, well, you're starchy. Starchy, okay. You know, you're loose, but I'm still your brother. You know, it don't matter. Just because I think differently, well, I think the skirt only needs to come to the knee. You think it needs to go to the ankle. I can't go to your church. Come on, people, that ain't God. That's not right with God. And, you know, you can't, you can't clean a fish till you caught it. Everybody wants them to walk into the church looking perfect, long hair, skirts dragging the ground, four feet behind them, modest as they come. That's not the way it's going to happen. Everybody's going to be coming in, and they're all going to look different. But what matters is when they stay with you long enough, if they're leaving differently. When they come to church, they need to come one way and they need to leave another. They can't come in perfect and then leave perfect. They need to come in all messed up and then get perfect. That's what we need to do. We need to save these people. You know, everybody, well, we don't, they don't look right. You can't come to our church. That ain't God. That is not God. You, there's a, you, you need a dress code. You need standards. But you don't need to turn the door to somebody because they don't match up to what you think your standards are. You need to work on them until they match up to what your standards are. You know, none of that, you know, none of that is so much of a cause to break fellowship with somebody. Somebody, you know, they broke fellowship with my grandpa. They said, well, he preached this person after they did wrong. So, what does that matter to you? You weren't there. It ain't got nothing to do with you. You know, everybody needs to stop being so drawn up about what other people are doing and worrying about other people and what they got going on. You need to be worried about what you got going on, and you need to be worried about all the souls out there that need saving. That's what we need to worry on. We need to dig into this word of God. We need to get so involved in this. So we need to know this, have it buried in our hearts so much that nothing can separate us from it. We need to be walking around. We need to be walking the word. We need to be the word made flesh just like Jesus was. We can do it. We can do it. The Bible says greater things than this you'll do. That's where faith comes in. Faith don't come in saying, I know God can do it I know God will do it he's going to do what he promised me God will do what he promised every time it don't matter 
If God promised you he's going to do something, you can bet your last dollar that he's going to do it. And that's what we need to get a hold of. We got to be the word. We got to get a hold of that flaming sword like I was talking about because that guards the way to Eden. That guards the way to paradise. We need that flaming sword. The Bible talks about the angel with the sword coming out of his mouth. He's talking about the word. He's preaching the word. We need to get a hold of that. We need to grab on that. We need to grab a hold of that and let it go and let it take us places that we never could imagine we could have got to. We need to go on and on and never be stagnant. Never. We never need to be happy where we're at. We need to always want more and want more and want more of the things of God. You don't want to just sit there and be like, well, I got all the truth. Don't need to look no more. No, there's always more that you need to look for. You always need to be going on with God because if you had the whole truth, you wouldn't be here. You would have done been translated and you're still here, so we need to keep looking because something ain't right. We need to always be trying to get on and on and go further with God. We need to run on with Jesus till we go home. That's just the plain and simple thing. You, can, you, know, you can't think that you got all the answers or that you're where you need to be. We need to be like the wind, ever moving, never ceasing. We need to always be trying to move around. We don't ever need to get comfortable. We need to always be moving, always go further on. Dig deeper into the word. Keep reading it. Don't stop after you read it the first time because I'm sure you missed something because you ain't going to read the whole thing one time and get all the answers. You need to keep reading and studying. We need to go on and on and further and get to the deep things of God because that's when you start walking with God hand in hand when you really know what you're doing. We need to really get somewhere with God. We need to get closer with God. We need a closer walk with him. That's what we really need because you can walk with God, but you need that close walk. We don't want to be in the outer court or the inner court. We want to walk right into the Holy of Holies. That's where we need to go, and we can do that now. That veil was rent in twain. We can walk right in there. That's where we belong. We belong in the Holy of Holies. There ain't the high priest. Sure, that's Jesus Christ. That is Jesus. We can walk right into the Holy of Holies. We need to get a hold of that. That's the mind of God. That Holy of Holies is the mind of God. And that's really what we need to get a hold of. And we can do that since Christ was sacrificed at Calvary. That means we can walk right into that Holy of Holies. Ain't nobody stopping us. And nobody needs to try to stop us. And we need to guarantee that nobody's going to. We need to go. We can't be stopped. Nothing in the world or nothing that's coming is going to be able to stop us. We got to go on. We need to keep moving. We need to get in that Holy of Holies and learn the deep things of God. Because once you receive the Holy Ghost, that's a penetrating light that goes through that carnal mind or that intellectual reasoning, whichever one you want to call it. De the devil. That's what it is. And it needs to get through there and it starts translating your mind like you would a book because I can tell you I'm a thousand times different than I was when I got the Holy Ghost at age 14 I'm a lot different thank the Lord you know you, it's not a quick thing like that it's a slow process it's translating your mind one thought at a time like it would a book but one word at a time but it's doing it one thought at a time and that's the mind of God we need to completely get this flesh under control and we can do it. You ain't got to sin every day. I don't care what anybody tells you. Joel Osteen up there saying, you got to sin a little every day. Get out of here, devil. You ain't right. You ain't right. You can't sin. You, you don't have to sin every day. You ain't got to. You can get, you can be perfect even as Christ is perfect. Is that not what the Bible tells us? That's what it says. And if that's what it says, that's what I'm going to believe. And I don't care who's going to tell me otherwise. And we need to get a hold of that. We need to get into that mind of God. We need to get into that holy of holies. We need to grab a hold of that flaming sword and light it, let it light the way back to Eden because that's where we're trying to get back to. We're trying to get back to a paradise. We're going we're gonna to get back. We ain't trying. We're going to. Nobody's going to stop us. And if they do, we're going to let them see that flaming sword and they're going to get out of the way because they know God when they see him. We need to, people need to look at us and be able to tell just by our yeah. countenance, just by the way we are. That's a man of God right there. Yeah, that's right. He's got the Holy Ghost. He's got something that I don't got and I want it. Right. That's what they need to think when they see us. Not everybody needs to go, those are those crazy Christians, you know. They're, they're something else, you know, with their rules and their checklist of salvation. They need to see us and say, I want what they got. Amen. We need to get it. We need to get with them and figure out how to get it. That's what we need to do. Where do they go to church? I want to go. That's what we need to be doing. We need to go out and get all these people. And we need to be 
something that they can look at and want to be like because we need to be Christ I believe in putting on Christ. Some people don't believe that, but I do. I believe we can put on Christ. I believe we can put on perfection even as our Father in heaven is perfect. We can do that. And we just got to get into it. And all the answers are right here. As they're revealed to you by God. Because not everybody has the same revelation as everybody else. Not everybody knows as much as everybody else, but you're held accountable for what you know. And the more you know, the more you're held accountable for it. Because when you turn away from the truth, that's when you're really in trouble when you know better and you do worse. Because let, let's think about Lot and Abraham. The three men, the three angels, if you want to call them angels, came to Abraham and he said, my Lord. He didn't say my Lord's. He said my Lord because he knew what was standing in front of him. He knew that was God standing in front of him. But when the two came to Lot, he said my Lord's. It didn't matter if there were 30 or 40 of them. Abraham knew my Lord. There's one, one God. And that's Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, today, and forever. He's always been here. He ain't going nowhere either. He's always been here. We've always had access to him. He's been walking the earth forever. I believe that. You can go to, he was Melchizedek and he's Greg McKinney. That's Jesus Christ. That's what everybody needs to think when they see us. That's Jesus. Even is Melchizedek or the fourth man in the fire. That's Jesus Christ. And we need to get a hold of that. And I hope and pray that we do it soon. Amen. Because things are coming to a close. Yeah. I believe that. I believe that they're coming to a close. And we need to really move on, yeah. on. and keep yeah. moving. Yeah. We don't need to stop. We don't need to get stagnant. We need to get a hold uh, and study for the final. We need to get a hold of that word. We need to get a hold of that flame and sword. And we need to move on yeah. till we get back home. And it don't matter. We need to remember where we came from because we're trying to get back. Well, that's about all I got to say tonight. I'm going to let uh, Brother Adam come up here and finish this off for me. Preach another one. You did a fantastic job. You had notes? No, this is for uh, Genesis 13. Holy Ghost man, don't preach. Who would you give the Lord a hand clap? Who enjoyed that tonight? Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. You too, Brother Stan. Come on. Yeah, you got it. Who knows that what he said was true? Who believes it? Well, even if you don't believe it, it's still true. <laughs> uh, the old saying goes, God said it, I believe. Well, hang on right there. You don't got to believe it or not as long as God said it. That's it right there. Uh, all the prayer requests that's been mentioned before, uh, before the service began, there's a... Uh, a lot of hurting, a lot of physical needs, a lot of spiritual needs, <coughs> financial needs as well around the church family here and uh, everywhere. Who knows, there's a lot of struggling always going on. There's a lot of tribulation going on in the church. And who knows, we need to keep our prayers and keep our thoughts and keep our minds on those who need that. Is there anything that you've, uh, you've thought of uh, more than what you said earlier? Anything else came to mind? God said one time, if you're in hell, keep on walking. You'll get out of there. Don't stop walking. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll get messed up. But uh, Brother Michael's meeting coming up this Saturday at a, at the Good Hope Community House at a 11 o'clock a.m. Be there and uh, come with your shouting shoes on, as, as people have said before. Come, go expecting something from God. Don't go expecting him to be prayed through and fasted up, because he will be. I guarantee it. But go expecting something from the Lord. If we could all stand, we'll... Go taking something with you. That's right. You should always have it with you. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the fellowship you've given us tonight, Lord, for the word, Father, for your spirit that's been in this place, Lord. We pray right now for the different requests that were mentioned, Lord. There's so many needs out, Father, so many 
people struggling, Lord, financially, Lord, physically, Lord, spiritually, Father. We ask you right now to meet these needs, Lord, to move on your people, Lord, move through your people, Lord, bring us together, Father, to the stature of the man of Christ Jesus, Lord. Be with us, lead us, and guide us, Lord, and direct our path to do your will, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. If you go with the Lord, he'll go with you. Shake hands and be friendly.